Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Yonit Arthur. I'm an audiologist and coach. You are on the Steady Coach. Today, we're going to be talking about binocular vision dysfunction and whether that is the cause of neural circuit dizziness symptoms. I know many of you out there have visual symptoms as part of PPPD, Malta de Barkmont syndrome, vestibular migraine, and other diagnoses that describe medically unexplained chronic dizziness. Others of you may have visual snow syndrome or related diagnoses and are also, again, having your symptoms blamed on BVD, which we're going to define shortly, binocular vision dysfunction. So we're going to explore whether that is the case today, and I'm going to give you some advice for those of you who have been diagnosed with BVD. Before we get into any of that, a couple things. First of all, this video is part of a series. It's an unedited video that's part of the Ask Dr. Yo series. I have an entire playlist of questions and answers like these, so if you have questions, please check out that playlist in the video description. The second thing is one of the reasons I don't have a video out about BVD yet is because despite having been asked about it for years, I am not a vision or eye specialist, and I really try to speak confidently about things that I actually know very well. So what I'm going to be giving you today is my take on this particular question, and I think I'm going to give an argument that makes a whole lot of sense, and it's based not just on logic, but also on my experience with many, many clients over the years. But I want to be very upfront that, of course, I am not an ophthalmologist, so I'm speaking a little bit outside my area of expertise in this video. Okay, so what is binocular vision dysfunction? Binocular vision dysfunction is sort of an umbrella term that basically describes a situation where your eyes aren't working as well together as they should, or they're just kind of inefficient as at working together. Now, typically, when those of you out there have your symptoms blamed on BVD, binocular vision dysfunction, I'm just going to call it BVD from here on out in the video, this particular difficulty is being blamed on a functional misalignment of the eyes. Misalignment of the eyes means the eyes are pointing in exactly the same direction. And this can come from structural differences between the two sides of your face. You know that you're not perfectly symmetrical. None of us are. Anyone who's ever looked in a mirror and then had a picture taken knows that. So this is actually very, very normal. And it can also come from just slight differences in how your brain communicates to the muscles of the eye. So what typically happens when someone has a misalignment like this is the brain compensates for it. The brain says, okay, the eyes aren't completely perfectly aligned. Let me send a signal to this particular muscle and fix that little misalignment. Or in many cases, that information that comes in from the eyes is then cleaned up via visual processing in the brain, which is, again, actually quite normal. We take in a ton of information from the outside environment and some noise from our eyes themselves and always do clean up on visual information via processing in the brain. So again, all this so far that I'm describing is totally normal. Okay, so the problem comes in when this is being blamed for dizziness symptoms. I can't speak to 100% of people, but I can tell you that for the vast majority of people out there with neural circuit dizziness symptoms, this is a major oversimplification and confuses cause and effect. Okay, so first of all, the most important thing to understand is these misalignments are incredibly, incredibly common. It's actually kind of hard to get estimates on this because the definition of misalignment varies from study to study, but anywhere from 20 to 70 percent, these are the numbers that I've gotten when I've done research on this, anywhere between 20 to 70 percent of people have some kind of misalignment. Some 
people out there, you've been diagnosed with a convergence insufficiency, around 5% of the population, again, approximately, has convergence insufficiency. The vast majority of people, again, do not have symptoms from any of this stuff. Why? Because our sensory systems are noisy and it is the job of the brain to make decisions about what information from your senses is important and what information isn't. That is the whole point of sensory processing in the brain. So little things like this, little misalignments or difficulties like this, typically the brain is able to keep up with it. It's able to correct for it. Very similar things happen with postural control. So when those of you out there with PPPD will often tell me, Yonit, it's so crazy. I'm swaying all the time when I'm standing. And indeed, some people with PPPD actually do physically sway. But often what's happening in this case is that your brain's just picking up on normal postural sway, meaning when you're standing, there are all these little micro adjustments that have to go into keeping you balanced. This is why babies have to learn how to stand and walk. It takes time for the brain to learn how to do those things because you constantly need to adjust your posture. Typically, again, the brain just filters all that stuff out so you're not even aware of any of those little postural adjustments. Similarly, with many of these eye misalignments, the, you're not even aware of it because the brain just filters that stuff out. Okay, so this sort of meets the definition of a normal abnormality, meaning when someone is telling you that this misalignment in your eyes is the reason you have dizziness, it is entirely possible that this misalignment predated your dizziness and has been there your entire life or long before you ever had dizziness. And the problem now is your brain's not doing a good job of correcting for it or filtering out the extra noise that's in it, meaning you're noticing the misalignment right now, whereas before you didn't. So this, again, is just a major oversimplification to say that this misalignment is the cause of your dizziness. Okay, second, this is super important. When you have neural circuit dizziness, you almost universally become visually dominant. I know not all of you have this come up, but especially those of you with visual symptoms, which I assume most of you listening to this video or watching this video, you, you are going to have visual dominance, which means that your brain is not doing a great job of filtering out visual stuff that it doesn't need. That's what visual dominance means. It doesn't mean you see better than you used to. In fact, many of you know that because you notice being unable to track objects or having blurry vision. But it means that your brain is not only confused about what it's seeing in the visual field, it's just not doing a good job of taking out the information you don't need to see. Here I am looking at my webcam as I'm recording this video. If my brain weren't able to filter out all the things in this room, my processor, my brain processor would be completely overwhelmed and I wouldn't be able to get the words out. So our brains are always filtering out all that stuff we don't need to see so that we can focus on the things that we need to see in the moment. So when you have neural circuit dizziness, your brain just isn't as good at doing that. So if just naturally you have a bit of a misalignment in your eyes or you acquired one as the result of something that happened to you later on in your life, your brain is just not going to be able to filter that fuzzy information out, that brain noise or that eye noise rather out. It's going to have trouble focusing you on the information that you want to see and rather it'll focus you on all the things that are coming in, which could be some of that bad information from the misalignment. So the other thing is that vestibular related issues. So those of you who do have some kind of vestibular related issue, maybe your symptoms started with neuritis or BPPV or something like that, that messes with how your ear and your eye communicate. And that messes with how well your eye is able to coordinate with your sense of balance and your, your posture essentially. So that can also lead to a misalignment, an alleged misalignment that again is part of the dizziness 
It's part of the dizziness. It's not its own thing. But again, often what's happening is you're going into these offices and they're treating it like it's its own thing and it's the cause of the problem rather than really it being an effect of the problem. The dizziness and the difficulties with postural control and your inner ear not communicating well to your eye or your brain not coordinating that communication well being the cause and the effect simply being the eye drift or misalignment, that's the, that's the result of having dizziness. It's not the cause of having dizziness. Okay, so my main point here is that treating BVD via only physical solutions is treating a symptom. It's not treating a root cause. It may sound like it's treating a root cause because you may have a physical misalignment in your eyes that someone can measure. But this so often happens with neural circuit dizziness. We get stuck. Well, not we, hopefully here on this channel, we don't. But in many, many research environments and medical environments, people get stuck describing the mechanism and attributing cause to the mechanism. To make that much simpler, they basically are describing how something is happening without describing why something is happening. Okay, your eyes may indeed be misaligned. That, that may indeed be true. But do we need to fix the misalignment or do we need to ask why your eyes are currently misaligned? And I say that's really more of the question we need to be asking. It's kind of like if your toaster were on fire and your kitchen was full of smoke and you got some industrial grade fans in there to blow all the smoke out of the kitchen. Cool, we got the smoke out of the kitchen, but the toaster is still on fire. So let's maybe troubleshoot that rather than just focusing on the smoke. Okay, so my advice. If you were told that you have BVD and that is the cause of your neural circuit dizziness symptoms, you want to be very skeptical in these scenarios. If the medical professional or the person telling you this is trying to blame all your problems on one physical cause, that's a red flag. Anyone with training in the vestibular world knows it's, 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 it's rarely just like a one simple thing and we fix it and everything's okay. Again, BPPV8, I suppose, is the exception, but in, in most cases, it's not just one simple thing, especially when we're dealing with complex neural circuit type symptoms. Um, if you get the sense that the professional is gatekeeping, like this is the one thing that doctors don't want you to know because then they won't be able to make money off of you. Again, I'm not saying that that may not actually be an accurate statement in some cases, but this should raise a red flag and make you be very skeptical especially if this is all kind of funneling you to a sales pitch involving spending a ton of money on vision therapy and or on some kind of device. Now, something to know, as you, as many of you know, I'm actually a big proponent of vestibular rehab. I, I think that there's definitely a place for it with neural circuit conditions. I have separate videos on that. If you want to know more, please, again, see that playlist in the video description. Vision therapy, unlike vestibular therapy, is not regulated. So anyone can say, I'm giving you vision therapy or I'm a vision therapist. It, again, it, it, there, that person doesn't need a specific kind of training in order to do that. And again, not that regulations always tell you about the quality of something, but they do, again, they, they should at least have you get your skepticism up. It, it should make you think twice and say, hmm, okay, I'll take all this at face value, but maybe I need to do a little bit of thinking about this before I say this is actually something I need to do. First, okay, before I go into what I was going to say next. my So again, if they're trying to sell you a treatment package, think twice. It would be awesome if you could get a second opinion from a different type of prof professional. I know many of you have many reasons not to trust mainstream physicians, but an ophthalmologist who's a physician who specializes in the eye would be a great stop if that's an option for you. Just to get a second opinion on it before you make the decision that this is something that you want to pay for. Generally speaking, in some cases, treating B uh, BVD via prisms or vision therapy can actually be helpful. So coming back to our analogy uh, or the metaphor of the smoke in the kitchen, even if you're going to put the 
toaster fire out, it, it actually is quite helpful to get the smoke out of the kitchen. So some of you are suffering a lot with visual symptoms right now. So if vision therapy or prisms or whatever helps you decrease the intensity of your symptoms temporarily, either because it's therapeutic or because of placebo, it doesn't matter to me as long as you feel better. That is okay. I'm not telling you not to do that, but you should realize that that is almost certainly not the root cause of your neural circuit dizziness symptoms, and you should not treat this kind of thing as a cure. Again, you can treat any physical misalignments that show up. You can address it through vision therapy if you'd like, but please do not view this as a cure because it's not. So that is my take on it. I hope this was helpful, and I'd love to hear your questions and comments. Again, I hope I hope I was able to be fair. I'm not saying that under no circumstances should it be treated, but for the vast majority of you, it is a red herring. It is a it is not the thing that you actually need to focus on to get better. It's all the nervous system stuff that we talk about elsewhere on my channel. Questions, comments, drop them below. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel, share the video, and if you're listening to this as a podcast, you can also follow the podcast give us a five-star rating. These things help me reach more people. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye.